In my opinion, the bed bugs are the most difficult indoor pests to get rid of, hands down. And it's because you pretty much need to get 100% control of bed bugs. If you kill 99.9% of bed bugs and you leave one fertilized female, you're going to have another infestation in a couple months. So, um, yeah, that's why they're so difficult. And they're, they're small, they're flat, they can hide pretty much anywhere. Um, and as we'll find out, they're resistant to most of the insecticides that we're going to use today. Um, so, getting started on identification, um, I actually have a preserved bed bug here from the hotel I stayed at. Um, I actually do have bed bugs here. Um, actually, there's one vial with a bunch of bed bugs I just got yesterday from a hotel in Nevada, and they're kind of elongated, which means they recently fed. So you'll see they're full of blood. There are a couple different life stages in here. Um, there's one vial with two bugs in it, and these are actually, I believe these are the swallow bugs. So this is a non-target submissive, and then another vial with one adult bed bug. So you'll get to check those out. I've been trying to get a hold of a live colony. Maybe, maybe I'll have some for you next year. We can pass them around and let them feed. Um, anyway. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you keep being fed on time and time again, you, you right. will develop an allergy. We do that one. We'll have it in a different district. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know, if you had a vial with some, a couple bed bugs in it, you, you know, you can feed them once and then put them in the, in the fridge at like 30 or 40 degrees and they won't need to feed again for months on end, you know, so you wouldn't have to feed them that often, um, unless you want to, I don't know. Anyway, so are bed bugs visible to the naked eye? Yes, you can see them. You can see every part of their, their life cycle. Starting with eggs, which are about a millimeter long, you can see they're creamy white. If there's a little hole in the top like that, that means they've already hatched. Um, and when they first come out, this is called a first instar or first stage nymph. Um, so this is the immature stage. And before they feed, they're actually really clear. So they, they can be pretty hard to see before they've fed. Uh, they're almost invisible against the white background. But once they've fed, you see these little, you know, little red dots running around and they're pretty easy to see. Um, and they grow, they get bigger and bigger, and the, the full-grown adult is about six millimeters in length. And so you'll see that in the vial. So definitely visible. Um, and again, I mentioned that they were kind of flattened, which allows them to fit in the cracks and crevices. So that helps them hide. Um, identification. Uh, somebody had asked about the wings. Well, if you find something with wings, it's not a bed bug. Okay, bed bugs never have wings. So that's one way to separate bed bugs out. Um, unfortunately, the, the hemipterin, which is a whole order of insects, as immatures, they don't have wings, and they all kind of look like this. Um, but what they do have are these little pads right there. They call them wing pads. That's something we commonly see on immature hemipterans. Um, and just I, I, as insects grow, you know, these wing pads will get a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and eventually they form wings. But in bed bugs, that doesn't happen. They'd never have wings. So, easy to remember. Um, for people who aren't entomologists, these are some things that I think are pretty close non targets visually. Um, you know, we have young cockroaches here. Those look a lot like bed bugs, I think. And then here's one of those hemipterans. This is immature. And you can see those elongate wing pads right here. So, you can see the wings are growing on this guy. Um, and when it reaches an adulthood, it'll have full, full wings. That's a stink bug, right? We've all seen those. So you know what they look like as adults. Um, this one here is called a mast hunter. Again, that's another hemipteran. And anybody recognize this guy? All right. All right, yeah, it's a carpet beetle larva. Um, so they, they do kind of resemble um, bed bugs. And especially their, their exuvia or their, the, the, the skin that they shed, I think that looks a lot like bed bug shed skin. Yeah, I mean, they're different if you know what you're talking about. But if you don't know what you're talking about, they look pretty similar. Um, okay, and so to make things more complicated is we have a few non-targets. And all of these I've received in the past year. Um, so here's the, what the bed bug looks like. We have bat bugs, poultry bugs, and swallow bugs. Actually, I think those other 
Those other ones I'm passing around are poultry bugs, not swallow bugs. But anyway, um, so in the lab, I look at them under the microscope, and you know, bed bugs have a certain pattern of hairs right here that's different from the bat bug pattern of hairs. And the other ones, I think, are, you know, just by looking at them, you can tell they don't look like bed bugs if you're an entomologist. Okay, so getting to that question, you know, can these bugs feed on, on humans? Yes, they can feed on humans, but they can't reproduce using human host. So if you get any of these, get rid of the bats, get rid of the poultry, or get rid of the swallows or the birds, and your problem will eventually just go away. These things might come and feed on you for a while in the absence of their host, but they're not going to be laying eggs. Their population's not going to build. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, up until this year, especially like in cabins and homes in Park City and things, um, I get a lot of bat bugs, like half and half. Um, but, you know, I don't think what I get at the lab is an accurate sampling of what's actually going on. Um, but, yeah, this is the most common non-target that I get are the bat bugs. I'm sorry. The size, they're almost identical in size. I mean, if I, if I get something that people think is a bed bug, I definitely take it to the scope, and I, I look for these hair patterns right here. And immediately I can say, oh, that's a bat bug, or it's not. Um, these ones here, you can pretty much tell they're not bed bugs, but just to be thorough, I, I run them through my identification keys so I can say, you know, maybe you have a, a bird problem, or, or maybe, you know, chickens are a problem. Like, move the chickens away from the house. You know, right there's your IPM control strategy. I, I would say, you know, they don't want to leave their primary host. Um, if you, but if you have the, the pen adjacent to the house, then, they, you know, they might come in and feed on you accidentally. But if you have the pen right next to the house and you get rid of your chickens, then they'll probably migrate into the house to feed on you. So be careful. When, when you take away the host, they go looking for new hosts. But I would say that if this thing is across the yard, they're probably not going to make that journey through the grass. And they can't fly, so um, yeah. Primarily, keep things away from the house. I, there are insecticides you can use on the chickens if you want to treat those things, but I don't know if that's worth it. <laughs>